mean to be alive? Okay, well, I think that's too much of a heavy-duty question for a young teenager like you, isn't it? But I'm not asking you figuratively or in the philosophical sense. I'm simply asking you literally. Well, you will most probably say something which is, living is said to be alive. Alive means something that has life in it, right? I have a pulse, I can move and jump, I am alive. You can run and eat and do a ton of other activities which means you too are alive. Basically, when you see an animal or a person indulging in some activity, be it reading, shouting, playing, working, we say that they are alive. And what about when someone is sleeping? Yes, they are still alive. And you know that because you can see them breathing. Well, what about plants? How do we know that they are alive? Well, you may say, when they look green and fresh, they are alive. But what about plants that have leaves of colors other than green? We still say they are alive. Now these could be plants which naturally have a different colored leaf or they could be of a different color because of the season or the growth stage they are in and they would grow over time. Now an important question that arises here is, is there a certain criteria to decide whether something is alive? There is. The most important criteria used to decide whether something is alive or not is movement. All living things that are capable to move by themselves without any external help are said to be alive. Animals and plants both show movements. The only difference between them is that the movements shown by animals are fast and hence can be observed easily, whereas in plants, the movement is very slow and cannot be observed instantly. Like animals, plants do not have the ability to move from one place to another. They are rooted in the soil. But there is something called plant movement, which is shown by their body parts such as leaves, flowers, shoots and roots. And let me tell you one important thing. The movement in a plant's part is the plant's response to a stimulus such as light, gravity, water, etc. Let me explain with an example. The shoots, the leaves and flowers of any plant move by bending towards the sun so as to face the sunlight. Another example of plant movement is the touch-me-not plant, where if you touch the leaves of the plant, they move by folding up. So the crux of it all is that movement is the basic criteria to decide whether a thing is living or non-living. Is that clear? Wonderful. Now let us see what are non-living things. Well, the opposite of living things are non-living things, as simple as that. So they cannot move by themselves. For example, a stone is a non-living thing, which cannot move by itself from one place to another or show any other type of movement. So you see, non-living things could be made up of millions of particles, but they aren't run by a network of interconnected systems like living things. So going back to the complex and intriguing world of all the things that have life, all living things are made up of tiny living units called cells. And these cells in turn are made up of even smaller particles called molecules. The movements over very small scale are invisible to the naked eye. The invisible molecular movement is, however, necessary for the existence of life. In fact, viruses do not show any molecular movement in them until they infect some cell. And that is partly why there is still a debate in the scientific world about whether they are truly alive or not. Like I told you, the complex structure of living beings is run by a network of systems. And these systems perform some basic maintenance activities to keep the organisms or living beings alive. These maintenance functions must go on even when the living beings are not doing anything particularly substantial or anything that involves a lot of wear and tear of the body. 
for example, even when we are just sitting in class, even if we are just asleep, or even when you are watching this video, the maintenance job goes on. The processes which work in a particular rhythm to keep the living organisms alive and perform the job of body maintenance are called life processes. Nutrition, respiration, transportation and excretion, control and coordination, growth movement and reproduction are vital examples. And since they are vital, let us understand the meaning of each term starting with the nutrition. The process of nutrition involves consuming food that goes in your body and converting it into smaller molecules which can be absorbed by the body. Next is respiration. This is the process which releases energy from the food absorbed by the body. The third on the list is transportation, a process in which a substance absorbed or made in one part of the body is moved to other parts of the body. Next comes excretion, which is the process in which the waste material produced in the cell of the body is removed from the body. What is control and coordination? This is a process which helps living organisms to survive in the changing environment around them. Next comes growth where over a certain period, organisms undergo changes in size and appearance too, especially humans. The next life process is movement, where the organism either moves from one place to another or its body parts show movement while remaining at the same place. And the last, but surely not the least, is the process of reproduction, which involves bringing more life into existence from the existing ones so that the organisms can live on this earth forever. All these processes require energy which the living organisms get from the food they consume. So food is a kind of fuel which provides energy to all the living organisms. And as we already know, food is one of the basic requirements of all living organisms. Today we are going to discuss the transport system. Don't get confused by the term. Now transport in everyday language means to carry things from one place to another. In biology, the term transport is used to refer to carrying of essential substances to all parts of the body so that they can reach each and every cell of the body. Essential substances? Too vague, right? What are these essential substances? It's simple. The substances that our body needs, for example, food, oxygen, water, are things that we need for performing basic functions. So there are special tissues and organs which are assigned the task of carrying these essential substances from one region of the body and transport them to several other parts. So transportation is the process in which a substance absorbed or made in one part of the body of an organism is carried to other parts of the body. Now we know that in human beings, blood transports food, oxygen and waste materials in our body. So let's just look at the composition and functions of blood so that we understand the transport mechanism better. Now this is no revelation to you that blood is a red colored liquid which circulates in our body. I hope you all remember that blood is a fluid connective tissue and its main components are plasma, red blood cells or red blood corpuscles, white blood cells or white blood corpuscles and platelets. Now the liquid part of the blood in which all the other cells are suspended is called as plasma. Actually it's a colorless liquid mainly consisting of water. Other than water as its major constituent, the plasma also contains proteins, inorganic salts and some hormones. The function of the plasma is to carry all the dissolved substances from one part to the other part in the body. So if plasma is a colorless liquid, what gives blood its red color? 
the red color of the blood is due to the presence of red blood cells. And these cells are red due to the presence of a red pigment called hemoglobin. Now these red blood cells do not contain a nucleus. This is the reason why red blood cells have a short lifespan. Each red blood cell lives for about 4 months. It is estimated that about 3 million red blood cells of the human blood die every day. About 4 times that number of new red blood cells are generated by our bone marrow every day too. Fascinating, isn't it? Now, red blood cells play a vital role in oxygen transport. The hemoglobin present in it binds with the oxygen and carries it from the lungs to the body tissue. The white blood cells are called as soldiers of the human body. This is because they protect the human body from the attack of pathogens. Some white blood cells even engulf the germs which cause diseases. And some white cells make antibodies to fight against infection. In simple words, white blood cells strengthen our immune system and keep infections at bay. Now platelets help in the coagulation of blood in a wound or a cut. So when you get a cut or a wound, it immediately starts bleeding, isn't it? Now the platelets help clot the blood due to which further bleeding stops. So the blood has three main functions in the human body. These are number one, transportation of substances from one part of the body to the other part of the body. Number two, protection against diseases. And number three, regulation of body temperature. Now in order to circulate blood all around the body, our body has a pumping organ that is the heart. A network of tubes to reach all the tissues and a system in place to ensure that this network can be repaired if damaged. And all these organs and network combined form a transport system. In human beings, the system which is responsible for transport of materials inside the body is called as the circulatory system. There are two circulatory systems through which materials are transported to relevant organs and tissues. They are first the blood circulatory system and second the lymphatic system. The blood circulatory system is that system which permits blood to circulate and transport nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide, hormones and blood cells from one place to another place inside the body. It comprises blood and blood vessels and the heart. Now, blood vessels are of three types. Arteries, veins and capillaries. Let us discuss the functions of these blood vessels in detail. Tutamate for more amazing video lectures. Download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.